ready to embark on a roller coaster journey with Franklin Sam. From a hopeful young hustler. Okay, prompt me a key. To a character whose path takes a dark turn. <laughs> And an even more tragic twist. Experience his remarkable shift from a beloved underdog to a millionaire villain unraveling the community. Are you sleeping at night, son? Like a baby. Igniting disdain and eventually finding himself as a homeless soul on the streets he once controlled, invoking our deepest sympathy. In the series finale, Franklin's shattered spirit will leave our hearts broken. But in the oddest way, I think Franklin got exactly what he always wanted. So stick around to the end so you can see exactly what that was. With quite some time passing since the series ended, I wanted to do something I haven't done before, which is examine the evolution of Franklin Saint. How did he go from this mild-mannered, smart, do-good kid from the streets to a millionaire drug kingpin on top of Los Angeles? to his ultimate fate as an alcoholic broken shell of himself. It's taken me a long time to put this video together, so I do apologize, but I wanted to go back and examine all 60 episodes, break down every key moment, every key person, and every key decision that gave us arguably the greatest character arc we've ever seen in a TV show. And it left many fans twisted, conflicted, and some even oddly satisfied. This is the evolution of Franklin Saint. Let's take a look back at how we were introduced to this character and some of the pivotal moments in just episode one. They call me Mr. Tits. Uh oh, neighborhood watching the house. <laughs> they Call Me Mr. Tills was a movie released in 1970, three years before the events of this show took place. But the movie was about a black detective, which is crazy to think that this is how Franklin friends perceived him at this point. We all know early on Franklin was a fanboy of Oso. Jerome introduced Franklin to the drug game on the smallest of scales, but it showed him he could run his own business and get money. Added Easter egg here. Sissy has a revolver for her protection when she's serving her tenants in the ghetto. In episode one, and that ends up being the very gun that she kills Teddy with years later. Wow, what attention to detail. Rob talking about Franklin. Frankie told you he was prom king at our school, right? Oh, and best friends with all the teachers. This little insight tells us Franklin is capable of navigating both worlds, the blacks and the whites. Smart, respectable, and presents well will carry him very far. First pivotal moment. Okay, front me a key. At this moment, you can see in Franklin's eyes that this was the moment to do something major. He looks scared and hopeful and this decision could change his life. On what scale, he has no clue, but he does seem to know that this will make him some money. Franklin uses his education to sway obvious. Book smart, one of Franklin's only advantages along with his determination in season one. Father you are, harder it is for me to aim true. Closer you are, the more it hurts. Shitty choices. That's a foreshadowing phrase if I've ever heard one. Because from this moment on, all Franklin is faced with is shitty choices. What a very intentionally placed line. Second pivotal moment, Louis introduces Franklin to his first buyer. Your nephew's a very impressive young man, Louis. Right before Franklin sees his dad, Louis warns him of the trouble cocaine will cause. But also she makes a statement that foreshadows Franklin's future as well. I'm just telling the truth, you know. That shit ain't worth the trouble to come with. Nah, you gonna need it. All of them. You gonna learn. One way or the other. In episode one, we're introduced to the character of Franklin Saint. And it is pivotal moments like these that set the stage for his journey. But as we dive deeper into this series, it's important to explore how the key moments from each season significantly shape Franklin's character. Now let's delve into season one and some of the crucial moments. This season is chock full of impactful scenes that thrust Franklin into a harsh reality of the drug trade. These experiences serve as building blocks, molding him into the person he ultimately becomes. He's forced to learn the ropes, fight back, and discover how to assert himself 
in this cutthroat world of drug trafficking. <laughs> Franklin is robbed. This teaches Franklin to be cautious and keep his guard up at all times. Franklin is scared to kill. Franklin at this moment still has a heart and he hadn't been hardened by the streets yet. Franklin learns to cook crack, changing the city with this and changing his life forever. Hey, yeah. Sleeping, man. Leon gets shot. This scares Franklin, but also it opened his eyes to how serious things have gotten. Season two. Whoever you are, I swear to you. I swear to you, I don't know shit about how I got busted. I think you do know. Say it faster, 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 faster. Franklin meets Teddy, aka Reed. Meeting Teddy and forming a relationship with the CIA is totally self-explanatory. If you ever seen this show, I don't have to explain no significant value in that. Franklin shoots Kevin. Kevin is the first person Franklin ever shoots in this show. And this decision changes Franklin forever. Then Franklin winds up in jail. In jail, he gets beat up. He has a conversation with Leon and all You leave here, go back in that dorm, grab the first nigga you see, and beat the fuck out that nigga till they grab you off of that nigga. You hear me? Show me who the fuck you is, nigga. Wait till fucking now. So I'm in here to be a fucking dad? That's a bad fucking joke, man. It's a fucking come back here, you Fighting, threatening. Louis takes over while Franklin is in jail. All the things that occur in jail taught Franklin exactly how ruthless and heartless he had to be on the streets when running his organization. Bye bye, Mr. Nice Guy. Season three, Franklin does business with Man Boy. 24 hours, either your boy will be dead and we be in business, or you and everybody you know will be gone. And we won't. Trip with Avi. He learns that he can't trust anybody once he took that trip with Ivy and Ivy tried to rob him. Mel gets hooked on crack, which leaves Franklin very conflicted. Then Franklin kills Andre out of complete desperation and feeling like his back was against the wall. This is the moment in a lot of fans eyes where Franklin crosses the line morally, but at the very least, you felt the weight of this decision more than any other. And it led to <laughs> season four franklin's with a cane and at some point he no longer needs this cane for the crutch but he uses it to appear weaker than he is just to test those around him the gangs are at war the violence and the war is leading franklin to want to get out even more so he looks to expanding into more legitimate business ventures Alton and Irene spreading that news story, this moment splinters Franklin's relationship with his dad forever, and it puts everything in his world under a microscope. Season 5, the summer of 1986, it's been three years at this point, and Franklin is forced to make a tough decision, and he kills Rob. But unlike when he killed Kevin, another best friend, he doesn't hesitate. It's not an accident, and he planned it out. This shows you just how cold-hearted and what a monster Franklin has become. Teddy comes back in Franklin's life, which immediately concerns him due to Teddy's unpredictable nature. Also, he knows that this will make it more difficult for him to leave the game. V is pregnant, which puts an extra battery in Franklin's back at this point. Now he is moving with a sense of urgency, causing him to create a deadline and moving with less care and less focus. Franklin's real estate aspirations are growing at this point and he's trying to do bigger and more legit things but i'd like to stay alive long enough to enjoy what i've made so from here on out i want to hear anything else about kilos or prices y'all want to go out and roll fine but do not for one second fuck around with what i gotta do to get mine because i promise you there is nothing i'm not prepared to do jerome and louis splitting off submits franklin me against the world mentality at this point only two people know about this place I'm one of them. Then Peaches turns around and steals Franklin's money and disappears. This is actually the beginning of the end for Franklin. The wedding, the drugs, the self-revelation here 
is what make Franklin realize just who he's become. No money. It's all gone. But as of this morning, I am in possession of over $70 million in seized cash assets. Teddy takes everything. Now we are at the beginning of the complete down spiral of Franklin. Your wife went behind my back and stole the plug and that's business. But I show up and take back what I made you and his stuff. Season six, Franklin is doing everything he can to find his money and you can feel the desperation rising as he tries to cling on to any remaining hope. Once Teddy is killed, all is over in Franklin's eyes. He has lost his drive and self-worth. This moment here is essentially the end of it all. Once he picks up that glass, all of his demons creep up and absolutely consume him. Obviously, this isn't the end of the series and we'll cover the significance of the last few scenes as well. Those are some of the key moments from each season that I believe matter the most to evolving and dissolving the man Franklin becomes. Although it's a lot of things that happened to Franklin throughout the 60 episodes and seven year span that this show covers, the major events don't even come close to impacting him the way his inner circle does. Let's start with the women in his life, all of whom supported, then enabled, and ultimately betrayed him for one reason or another, Sissy. She held him down through thick and thin and helped him turn his money clean get real estate and grow his money exponentially. There is nothing she wouldn't do for him, but after losing her husband, her brother, and eventually her son, she finally decided that she was going to put an end to it all. Killing Teddy was revenge for Austin, but it was also to spite Franklin and assure he never got that money because he made it so clear that the money mattered more to him than she did. Louis. Louis introduced Franklin to his first buyer. She supported him through everything in the drug aspect of life. She cooked for him, she distributed for him, she expanded for him, and eventually her aspirations got larger and she decided she could do it all on her own. So she broke apart from Franklin to run her own organization and eventually went to war with him over money. Mel, Mel was his first love she had his back and wanted better for Franklin. She was the first real victim of Franklin's crimes. Once she got hooked on crack, that was it. Franklin kills her dad out of desperation and once she makes the connection, she shoots Franklin with every intention of killing him. And once that didn't happen, she got the reporter Irene involved. T, not much to say about T, she held it down for him, but she had her own agenda and she tried to play both sides of the fence and she tried to set Franklin up from the very start. Veronique, she really seemed suspicious throughout, but ultimately, she tried to ride with Franklin through it all. But once he turned to alcohol, put his hands on her, she disappeared and took the remaining money with her. Now, Franklin wronged all of these women with his own selfish acts and his arrogance and misdeeds, which led them to screw him over some more than others, which raises an interesting question. Which woman do you think wronged him the most? Mel by shooting him and leaving him crippled for some time? His mom for killing Teddy before he got his half of the money back? Or V who took the remaining 800 grand and his child away? Leave your thoughts in the comments below. Now, let's talk about the men in his life. The ones who served as role models and mentors. Alton, strictly served as a reminder for who Franklin didn't want to become but ultimately does become. He too made decisions that were detrimental to Franklin's livelihood. Jerome. Uncle Jerome introduced Franklin to hustling and drug dealing. They fought, they argued, they didn't see eye to eye all the time, but through all the good times and bad, they did remain family. I think Jerome is who Franklin aspired to be. And despite their differences, Jerome never lost love for Franklin and he, never made a decision that directly affected Franklin in a negative manner. Leon. Leon held Franklin down more than anyone. His best friend, his right hand man, his gunman, his brother for life. Leon taught Franklin all about the streets and he was right beside him from the beginning and helping him out in every single way. Leon was just solid and even when he left or told Franklin no, it was never to hurt Franklin 
but only to do what was best for him or what he saw was best, period. Avi. Avi was the gateway, the plug. Avi taught Franklin business lessons, street lessons, and taught him he couldn't trust anybody. Also, Oso was a role model from the beginning, and every time Franklin needed saving, somehow Oso was there for him. And they had quite a few interesting adventures together. Teddy. Teddy mentored Franklin, but he also used and abused Franklin. He controlled and manipulated Franklin from the very beginning, and Franklin picked up a lot of lessons from Teddy. He helped nurture Franklin into a successful businessman, but only to his benefit. Franklin was just a pawn to Teddy, and it was unfortunate to watch Franklin get screwed over by Teddy like that. I think every one of these characters could have a video similar to this. Even the characters I didn't mention at all, or very little in this video, like Man Boy, Scully, Kane, they could all have an evolution of type of video. So if y'all want to see more of these and you enjoyed this, drop a comment down below and I'll make it happen. Like, right away, not months from now. My bad. Franklin's downfall is an accumulation of unfortunate events, a perfect storm that could have been avoided had he not made one fatal decision, turning to alcohol. Throughout the entire series, Franklin abstained from alcohol, smoking, and drugs. However, the moment he took an ill-advised drink, his life took a dramatic turn for the worse. His determination to avoid becoming his father, who was a source of shame for him, had kept him away from drinking is tragically poetic. And after enduring so much hardship, it wasn't the streets, the CIA, or the DEA that brought him down. It was his own inner demons, which he had evaded for years. In the first episode, Mel asked him why he didn't drink. I don't know. It just don't make me feel good. It's just all tired and slow. And then what does make you feel good? This. Talking to me? Working. Getting paid. And see, what he was saying was it made him feel sluggish and it interfered with his ability to make money and work, which gave him a sense of purpose. When the money dwindled and he could no longer work so effectively, he lost much of what he had, and he no longer had the strength to fight, hustle, or pursue greatness. Franklin was many things. Brilliant, ruthless, manipulative, loyal, caring, ambitious, but the character trait that was his ultimate downfall was his arrogance. He just refused to be wrong. He always thought that he knew what was best for everyone, no matter what. And if he could have ever set his ego aside after his mom killed Teddy, he still had properties and cash on hand, but nothing was ever enough. Through blind rage, he just didn't see how financially he was still well off and in a position to live well for the rest of his life. His ego and arrogance wouldn't let him let go of what was and look at what is. Tragic, really. I watched the last episode over like, man, it's still so much hope and opportunity, and he couldn't see it. The alcohol also impaired his judgment as well. The goal that Franklin so desperately chased throughout the entire show, he finally got. In the very first episode, we witnessed Franklin Young, full of aspirations, expressing his fervent desire for freedom. Oh, so you are after something. <laughs> You're fucking right. And what's that? Freedom. Freedom from all of it. Freedom from it all. At this point, he's merely trying to find a way to escape the constraints of his surroundings, believing that making money is the key to his liberation. Fast forward to the final episode, and we see a stark contrast in Franklin's character. He has indeed amassed millions from selling drugs, but his success comes at a devastating cost. He lost everything that he held dear, spiraling into homelessness and alcoholism. Yet, there's a tragic irony in his declaration to Leon. I'm free. Free from all of it. Freedom. Freedom from all of it. Wow. Yeah. 
This transformation from hopeful pursuit of freedom to a self-destructive declaration of independence encapsulates the central theme of this show. It's a poignant commentary on the price of ambition and the moral compromises we make in pursuit of our desires. Franklin Journey is a sobering reminder that true freedom often lies not in external riches, but in the choices we make and their consequences. A powerful message that resonates throughout this series. Be careful what you ask for.